of poets and dreamers. Was it not you that once sagely teased out the futility of mistaking cheap plastic pains for genuine Yao spears that kill instantly without waiting for blood to drip onto Paper, parchment quality imported from liberal Scandinavia, where the owner Soyinka, Achebe, and Ngugi, as avidly as we canonize our own with eternal funeral orations in Sang Froa. Did you not warn me once about the dying chameleon's willful changes of time, place, and person? Like a Greek god stranded in the depths of the African forest. Could a Greek god understand our broken Chewa prayers, let alone discourse with Ngugi and his Gikuyu tongues of flames burning across the nation in vivid black and white? And did you not warn me once about hiding in thick forest rivers behind animals, fishing from fables beloved of poets, prophets, and insomniac hypochondriacs seeking unattainable cures and portions for cosmic problems too trivial to ignore. Now these forests lie bare and denuded after forest fires lit to Chilembwe's memory. Eager fingers scorched in the dream and our precious animals exposed in the transparency of man-made deserts. Even as our young fish abandoned drying streams for the luxury of clean waters to be found south of the Shire. Beyond that, did you not once say you'd never tune to that radio? Too much rap music for aging ears. And didn't I dare extol the virtues of Mzwakembuli and even Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five to a linguist who held his tongue? Images of old men in back turned caps and baggy pants shaking the arthritic bones and bendy pot bellies jarring against the rigid metronomic rhythms of the new age. Better leave it to the young rappers close to the village to twist Jane Austen's English around free from Chewa, Yao rhythms and their scary pseudo-Afro-American violent urban jungle toy mafia gunplay metaphors, rapping and dragging the old folk tales, screaming to their present senses. Despite the ass-kicking crudity, Poets might listen wryly 